Dear Elena, you are representing the European institution, but you have also your background as a Minister for Tourism in the Hellenic Republic. Also, I am happy that here in the room with us, we'll still have some other women, members of the European Parliament, very involved in the travel and tourism industry, Josian, Claudia. I am really happy that you are still uh, together with us. So, you have to fight to be in an important position at national level, and also now you are in the European Parliament, and you can fight to support the women in politics, but also the women in private sector, to obtain their rights, because in fact, it's a right to be in a, in a C-level position, to have more women in boards, to have a, a, a balance between the, the payment between men and women. It's something that it should happen a long time ago, but still needs more and more support and more and more uh, pressure from the European institution that this became a reality. So I'm challenging you, because I know that you have a lot of experience and I'm challenging you to develop on this, uh, on this topic. First of all, thank you so much for inviting me here, because I'm around uh, excellent guests and great speakers and friends from the European Parliament, but also from the sector that actually uh, I used to be uh, very much involved uh, as uh, I was a minister of, for tourism of Greece uh, 2015 till 2019. Um, I have to say that uh, the role of uh, a woman in tourism is uh, very, very important. Women's leadership in tourism is directly linked not only with the sector success, but also with the social economic growth, not only in a whole uh, destination, but also in local economies worldwide. And I have to say that to us women, nothing was given. We had to fight for everything. And even myself, I have, I have to speak about time. I was doubted all the time. So I, have to, I had to be twice as better, I would say, from from a, a man colleague, because for me, they were expecting miracles. Actually, I was really lucky because I brought a miracle in my country. <laughs> 2015, 2019, Greece was really in a very, very difficult position. You remember the political issues, you remember the, uh, the Grexit, all this um, stability that we needed, uh, unfortunately, was missing, economic uh, crisis, uh, social crisis. And um, I was really uh, very happy when uh, I brought all these results because tourism, the truth is that brings really very fast um, uh, revenue, also a lot of investments. And I have to say that I was very happy when four years later, the results were really impressive. Uh, Greece uh, had uh, 18 billion euros from um, 32 million tourists. When I got uh, the ministry 2015, we had only 22 million tourists. So in, in four years, I brought 10 million more, which actually was the growth was big. And uh, at the same time, the whole um, sector of tourism, but also the sectors that they uh, grow with the tourism, like um, entertainment, uh, trade, uh, uh, restaurants, uh, hotels, everything around, the growth was more than 37 billion. So it was a huge help for my country and at that time was really crucial. I think this was the period that I stopped being a woman minister, but a good minister for my country. And uh, I'm very proud of that. But as a member of the parliament, um, I have to say that um, I'm very optimistic because we can uh, change all these inequalities and we can change it by law. As you said, women's on board, which is actually one um, uh, file that was um, uh, blocked in the council for 10 years. Uh, the last two years we worked on and uh, three months uh, ago, 
was um, uh, voted in the um, uh, in Strasbourg, and we're very, very, uh, how can I say, proud of this, because uh, actually make a big difference. Because now uh, women on board uh, on board's directive will be minimum 40% of women for uh, non-executive boards in EU companies by the end of June 2026. So all the countries, they have to uh, follow the directive and also 33% uh, uh, will be in both executive and non-executive, which is a big achievement. Uh, also, uh, it's important to say that the member states, they will um, have to set up penalties systems for companies failing to comply uh, with these rules. And um, it's important to say that women, they can really bring a lot of success, as I said at the beginning, to uh, the companies and to the sectors because they actually are, uh, th their mind, their work, um, they're complementary to men work. And it's different. So they can be really leaders. But we have the pay system, which is not equal. So we work on that. And actually, because women uh, have lower uh, wages for the same work, as you know, already uh, the European Commission has introduced uh, a set of uh, pay transparency measures uh, because we work on that as well for pay information for job seekers, the right uh, to know the pay levels for workers doing the same work, men or women, uh, and gender pay gap reporting obligations for big companies. Employees also will have the right uh, to compensation for discrimination in pay. And this has been a significant step, but uh, more needs to be done. And the last thing, the funding for women. This is also very important because through the next generation EU, women, they can have funding, especially in SMEs. Uh, also the recovery and resilient facility. And also the member states, in order to receive adequate funding, they must have include clear goals for gender equality in their national recovery plans. Something very important also for the equality, because if we have equality barriers and we continue to support the equality ba uh, barriers, it's very difficult to have the resilience and the sustainability, not only in tourism, in all the sectors, but because we're talking about tourism, and also don't forget that 58% uh, of women are in this sector. Of course, not in big positions, because uh, unfortunately, uh, all the, uh, as we said, low pay and low position are usually occupied by women, but we will change that too. So to finish, the last thing, through European programs for training, upscaling, and reskilling is the way that we can support uh, the uh, effort of women to be able to have this sector, to have the same rights. Yes. Something that is obvious, but is not happening. It's true. I agree with you, Elena. We have to prove more. We have to show more performance. You know, sometimes when a woman is performant, they are saying, yes, she is very performant. When a man is not so performant, they say, maybe he is not so performant, but he has great potential. <laughs> you know, I, I heard many times this uh, kind of appreciation, and uh, I don't like it. But it's important, and I'm really happy that uh, the European institutions are, are making uh, uh, steps forward in this direction. Elena, we can be a strong voice in the European Parliament and at the level of the European institution. Sometimes also to impose that something has to move really quickly. Because, you know, the time is, now, the time is not our friend. The COVID situation affected a lot the situation of women in the travel and tourism sector and not only. So we really need like quick measures to be implemented as soon as possible. Well, uh, first of all, I have to say that uh, the inequalities, unfortunately, uh, 
uh, seems that they will grow because it was not only the pandemic that uh, caused a lot of uh, problems and um, uh, women uh, struggle more than men. But also, uh, 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 there is the war in Ukraine, the energy crisis, uh, rising inflation, uh, the soaring prices in basic goods and services. And this will affect travel and tourism more. And everybody says we're going to have a very difficult winter, but a difficult winter follows probably a difficult summer. We're here to see. I, I want to be optimist, but the truth is that things are not looking very good. So, uh, women who work in tourism usually earn, as we said, uh, 10 to 15 percent less. So, exactly. already is a huge problem. Um, uh, in this sector, uh, unfortunately, has almost twice as many women employed um, as other sectors. So, and uh, women represent as much higher proportion of self-employed uh, in tourism than in other sector. So there. In the inequalities and, and, and the uh, barriers of uh, equality, they have to go down if women and SMEs and uh, small family business, we want to survive. Uh, so, as I said before, the goals are, of course, all the directives and legislation and everything that, as a uh, European Parliament, we support, but also uh, they need data and they need, um, and it's important to have accurate and reliable quantitative uh, and uh, quality data to address the inequalities in positions, salaries, overall employment, and education that women face. Another thing is to target holistic policies and action, and they have to must uh, take place to promote equal pace, as we said, careers and business opportunities for women, because Let's face it, they're very unlucky, the business and the uh, investments that, that they don't use and they don't uh, get advantage of the women talent because women have different talent than men. And everybody knows that. And another thing, as was mentioned before uh, from the private sector, the private sector and the public sector, they have to work together. And uh, they have to work together because I remember that when uh, I was a minister of tourism and I had the, the opportunity to be accepted and uh, to follow my strategy, uh, then things change a little by little and in four years we have all the results. And in change also in all the uh, matters of uh, equality and also the salaries. Like in Greece, they sign the, the work... Um, hospitality business to make sure that they will have the minimum salary and to be honest was almost the same for the low paid of course positions with the men's salary so if they work together the two sectors i think we can see a lot of uh, differences and also another thing that i wanted to say it's the cooperation it's important because you see in uh, England, for example, all this um, great resignation that happened. Uh, this is an example of inequalities that they have to be uh, down. And uh, also the private sector, and I close with this, has to give innovative ideas, exchange uh, know-how, best practices, and uh, the most important thing, to provide the necessary data to know what is going on in this sector between the inequalities. And we have to think that we have to work together, men and women, for the best, not only in our family, not only in our society, but also in our work for the growth and the benefit of our countries. So cooperation is the key word.